How's it going, everybody? My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a through hiker. I am a backpacker. I am just a huge hiking nerd. And every single week on this podcast, I chat with other through hikers or other backpackers or other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. And we've got a big guest this week. Miranda goes outside, is on the podcast, and it was so much fun. We talk all about how she first got into backpacking, the whole thing with how she started working with REI, and we also talk quite a bit about what happened pretty recently in that she stopped working with REI. And I feel like that made it sound way more dramatic and negative than it actually was, is not negative whatsoever, but we got into all of it, and I'm so grateful that she was willing to take the time to talk about all this stuff and... To be quite honest, she is a great podcast guest. It makes total sense. She is a pro at the content thing, and her channel is awesome. Before we get into the conversation, I just want to say real quick, I have a feeling I'm going to have quite a few new listeners for this episode, so I would really appreciate it if you enjoy it. If you go back and listen to some old episodes, maybe consider subscribing to the podcast or following the podcast. Do you even subscribe to podcasts? I don't even know, but just checking out some old episodes, that would be awesome. And also, I would appreciate it if you checked out my YouTube channel. I am also a hiking YouTuber, although I'm not as good as Miranda, but I, I think I'm okay at it. It's called Kyle Hates Hiking, and yeah, go, go check it out on YouTube. Without further ado, here is my conversation with Miranda. You can find her on YouTube. Miranda goes outside on Instagram. Miranda goes outside. It was awesome. Here we go. All right, here we go. Miranda goes outside. How's it going? So good. How are you? I am fantastic, and I want to thank you so much for for doing this podcast like you you're a pretty highly requested guest and it also worked out pretty well because we kind of started chatting and going back and forth on instagram a little bit over the last few months and so it wasn't just a complete cold call which always helps so no i i appreciate you coming on here and i'm very excited to talk yeah me too thanks for uh, having me i'm i'm excited (laughs) yeah (laughs) so the first other outdoor pod or not outdoor podcast outdoor like youtuber i've really had um like a conversation with so it's kind of cool oh yeah definitely definitely um and maybe we can get into some of the youtube stuff uh which like it's always like a fine line because i think people are interested in that stuff but at the same time obviously we live and breathe it so we could just go so far in and then eventually people are just going to be like all right we don't care about how many fucking views this exact video (laughs) got with like you know all this like what your click through is and all this this stuff so (laughs) but it is but it is still fun to talk about honestly and and i i think there is a lot of value there but anyways um i wanted to start this by kind of telling a scattered somewhat but probably not that funny story about how we kind of got connected and so (laughs) Uh and so let's see here back in like i don't know exactly i'm sure you don't remember either but at some point between like 2020 and 2021, Miranda goes outside, followed me on Instagram. And I noticed at the time and I, I, I knew who you were and everything. I hadn't really watched too many of your videos, but I knew you were like working with REI and you had a pretty big channel and stuff. And so I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then like, I think it was in 2021, uh, my friend Flossie and I were walking through the Williston, Vermont REI and there was a TV that was like in the store and it was playing one of your videos. And so I kind of took a moment to like brag to Flossie. I was just like, Hey, she follows me on Instagram. I was like (laughs) pointing at the TV and he's like, yeah, whatever, dude, I don't care. (laughs) And then (laughs) but anyways, um, flash forward to this past year, 2022, um, Flossie, myself and my friend Brandon, we're all hiking through the Sierras. We're getting close to Mammoth Lakes, I believe, California. And there's like virtually no cell service through there. And so I think we had gone like a solid two days without any cell service at all. And trust me, I was checking as much as I hate to admit it. (laughs) And eventually we got to a spot towards the end of the day, end of the day before we were about to go into town. And I got a little bit of service. And so my phone explodes because I'm so popular. You know, I get all these texts and messages and notifications and all this stuff um, from the past two days. And as I'm scrolling through it, I noticed that I got a DM from who but Miranda at the time in the wild. 
<laughs> and I was so excited. I was like bragging to Flossie. I was like, Miranda slid into my DMs. Like Miranda's <laughs> talking to me. Like all this stuff. And again, like honestly, I hadn't really watched many of your videos at this point, but oh it was just cool. It was just cool to be contacted by another creator like that. And not gonna lie, someone with a, a much bigger audience. And and I think one of the coolest things about it was you just had a lot of nice things to say about the videos we were making on the PCT and stuff. And I could tell that you actually had watched some of them not just like a hey we're both youtubers kind of message not that there's anything wrong with that either but i just really appreciated it and i appreciated it so much that i i kept a a little i don't know what you want to call it it's not a journal but i just had like a printed out little book with information about the pct like mile markers and stuff and i would like circle certain spots and i would write little notes to look back on and I remember, I don't remember the name of the spot, but I remember wherever that spot was that I got service and saw this message, I wrote, Miranda in the wild slid into the DMs. <laughs> no way! <laughs> oh, I love that. Wow, that it makes was, me feel very popular. <laughs> it was it was awesome. And since then, like I said, we've gotten to talking and stuff. So yeah, um, long story short, I'm very excited and let's jump into it. Yeah. The way I usually like to start these is... I like to just learn a little bit about how people got into backpacking and we're going to talk about some of the REI stuff and like moving on from REI because I'm sure people want to hear about that. Um, But let's start, let's start at square one, Miranda. How did you first get into backpacking? I love this question. I feel like I answer this question all the time and um, I'm not saying that in a bad way, but just like, I think it's so interesting because so many people, especially of my audience, are so curious about how somebody starts backpacking because so many of them are new to it, you know, and like are not backpackers or or hikers are just getting started. Um, And I also did not grow up as a hiker or a backpacker or a camper or like any of that. Um, I got into backpacking when I was 18. I uh, walked into an REI with my sister who was working at the store at the time. I needed a summer job um, and she worked there and I thought, what the heck, I'll hang out with my sister over the summer. Like, that seems cool. (laughs) And I got a job um, at the store as a cashier because like they were going to put me on the floor. I didn't know anything. You know, they're like, you can work like, you know, 12 (laughs) hours a week as a cashier (laughs) Mm -hmm. like during our not busy times, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just became like so fascinated with all the gear because I had so many coworkers who were just like really friendly and really kind and of all different experience levels, all more experienced than me. Um, And I thought like after that summer, I went to college and like wanted to try a backpacking trip. So I actually like won a pack in a raffle oh nice yeah and i um it was too small for me and it was like it was the original rei flash 45 liter pack and it was in a women's extra small which like if you know packs they're all vanity sized they're getting away from this now but like women's packs are vanity sized so it's like extra small small medium whereas like quote unquote men's packs are small medium large Mm -hmm. and so i was like well i'm kind of short you know so an extra small sort of work but Um, I was like, you know, just kind of on the cusp between the two sizes. So the torso was too short for me. The pack was 45 liters and I was carrying a six pound tent and the pack was designed (laughs) to carry like, you know, 30 pounds max or something crazy. Um, And so I went on this backpacking trip with someone I was dating at the time and it was terrible. Like I just had an, it was awful. Like we only hiked (laughs) in, I think like six miles or something, but we stupidly did a trip where you hiked down into a Canyon and then like back out again the next day, which just meant that I was exhausted the next day. Oh yeah. Jeez. I know. So dumb. I don't know why. I (laughs) I just like thought it'd be pretty, Um, but it was awful. It was just like so uncomfortable. I was, I didn't sleep very well. It rained at camp. I couldn't really cook food. Um, and we got back to the car and this person that I was with was like, wow, they, that sucked. And I was like, yeah, that was awful. And he was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do that again. And I was like, I think I'm going to go next weekend. And I just oh, like, okay. got so hooked. I think and there was this, this element of it being hard and me being bad at it. Um, which is like not a particularly new thing for me. Like I'm bad at a lot of stuff that I try for the first time. Like I, I did not get the gift of being good at things that I try for the first time. <laughs> 
um you know those people that are like i know they, like, pick up a frisbee and they're like amazing at frisbee for the yeah first time ever i'm yeah. definitely not one of those people either <laughs> oh my god yeah not at all i'm like terrible at most things <laughs> but uh backpacking was just like something that i got really excited about so yeah that was when i was 18 i got really into backpacking and that kind of led me into all these other like aspects of uh the outdoors like uh camping and climbing and um, obviously hiking, um, like adventure travel became a really big thing for me. Um, but backpacking was always my like consistent activity that I returned to. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so funny. Like I'm sure there's someone out there who just went on their very first backpacking trip ever and just absolutely killed it and had right. a great time. But let's be honest. I feel like the majority of people, myself included, their first time is just, usually pretty terrible at the very least oh, yeah. it's it's just kind of bad maybe right. like it, it it very rarely goes well and so the the first time that is and so it's like i just i always have like kind of a lot of respect for people who push through that and obviously there's a lot of people who do but i've always wondered like how many people out there tried backpacking and it went terrible like it does for so many probably right. the majority of people and then just never did it again like like we're just like yeah that was awful and i'm not going to do this again like just think about how many more people would be into this if that wasn't the experience for most people it's it's kind of it's kind of trippy to think about almost yeah no i totally agree with you and i think it's one of those things where um like i think especially for those of us who were not particularly into any aspect of the outdoors like i said like i wasn't into hiking i didn't like i was not i didn't really like walking that much but like backpacking just seemed like something I wanted to try, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think about people who have either been really nervous about trying backpacking or go one time and like, don't really care for it versus people who like hike for so like such a long time, you know what I mean? Like have a, mm -hmm. an experience of like hiking on the weekends and go backpacking and are like, nah, I'll stick with day hikes. You know, it's like, there's just <laughs> such an interesting, I think way that this, um, this people either love backpacking or they're like, kind of neutral about it you know yeah um even though most of us have had really terrible first experiences and like 50th experiences let's be honest like sometimes <laughs> it just sucks <laughs> yeah it does it does my audience yeah. knows that all too well but yeah but it's worth it obviously um so you get into backpacking you're yeah. and also by the way actually before i get into this i just think and i'm sure you've been told this a thousand times and stuff but I think your story of how you got into it is pretty unique too. I feel like most of the time people, at least these days, find it from social media or maybe they have a friend or a family member that gets them into it or something. But the fact that it's, it kind of sounds like you got into it because of like work. Like I feel like a lot of people who yeah. work at Outfitters like REI, for instance, they, and maybe I'm wrong and you can correct me, you would know better than I would, but I, I have a feeling that most people who get into that line of work do it because they love the outdoors and they're into yeah. the outdoors and then they want to work in relation to the outdoors. But it kind of sounds like it was the opposite for you, huh? It was complete. Yeah, it was the complete opposite. That's, like, that's like funny. I said, I like, yeah, it was really weird. I had no, yeah, no interest in the outdoors whatsoever. I mean, truly like it wasn't, I didn't like sports. I didn't enjoy sweating. Like I, I just, <laughs> I had like no interest in it at all. Um, and yeah, like working at REI really got me excited about the outdoors. And I think like, truly, I mean, I have a lot of love for REI and I'll probably like talk about that. But like truly, I think that that's one of the really cool things about that company um, and something that I saw working at the stores so much. Um, and like and no one's telling me to say this also, to be clear, I don't work for them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is completely You're free. Opinion. You can say whatever you want. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like even when I worked, I worked in REI in Soho, like in, in New York City. And there were a lot, I mean, there were so many people who worked at that store that were, you know, really into, into the outdoors, like really into outdoor recreation. But every once in a while, um, when we do hiring, there would be like at least five or six people who'd get hired who were just like really genuine, awesome customer service people, or just like really friendly, really open that would get hired as like cashiers, you know, or as customer service reps. And Sometimes they would only be there for a short amount of time, but other times I would like, you would see them be like, oh, climbing, like that seems cool. Or like, oh, urban cycling or bike commuting, that's cool. And you would see them just like kind of 
become more and more immersed in this community. And just like happened to me, they would like move off of the cash registers and start working in like the cycling department or like Mm -hmm. working down in like outerwear or footwear, you know, it's like, you just kind of saw people migrate. So I think that's a really cool thing about the company is that like, it is a really amazing place to start your journey, like in the outdoors, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. whether you're like shopping there or honestly like working there. So yeah. yeah, I think it's so awesome. And it's so unique too. So, yeah. so this might be a big jump, but you, you start working at REI, you start getting into backpacking and other outdoor activities as well. How did, and again, I'm sure you've answered this a thousand times, but I got to know Miranda, how did the YouTube thing start? Oh man, I gotta be honest. Sometimes I'm like, not sure. Like sometimes I'm like, how did I get here? <laughs> like where, <laughs> how did we wind up here? Um, Okay, so let me see if I can can like summarize this because I think it's also really unique, my experience. I'm really lucky in a lot of ways. Um, so I was working, so I moved to Washington State. Sorry, Kyle, let me think about this for a second. Okay, <laughs> you're good. The, you're good. The best way to say it. Um, not because there's anything to hide, but just because I, I think it's kind of like there are, you are right, there are a lot of big jumps that happen that like made me into an outdoor YouTuber somehow, you know? Um, Okay. So your question was how did I go from basically like being a cashier to being a a YouTuber, right? Yeah. That is a pretty big jump. (laughs) It's a very big, big jump. (laughs) So, um, so actually it all started because I was working for, um, I was working with an on location photography team at REI uh, as a production assistant and how I got there is like a whole other story, but I basically just decided I wanted to work for REI headquarters. And so I moved myself out to Washington state and just kind of like elbowed my way into a position. Okay. Um, And I was working as a production assistant, which if you aren't familiar with like what a PA does, it's basically a gopher job. It's like, you know, (laughs) go for coffee, go for whatever, like pick up lunch. (laughs) I've never heard Um, that term before. That's funny. (laughs) Oh yeah. Gopher. (laughs) Yes, it's a uh, and, and it was a really fun job. Like it was it was a lot of work, but it was really fun. Um and while I was working as a PA, I was also occasionally helping with these videos that we called expert advice, which was like talking about, you know, how to pick a backpack or like how to pitch a tent or whatever, you know. And I was just fairly comfortable on camera and so people so the media studio where I worked, the people who worked on the video stuff would be like, hey, is Miranda free to, you know, do a, film a video with us about like this, you know, new backpack that we mm-hmm. got or whatever. Um, I was just kind of around. Um, and I was also doing all sorts of weird things like writing for the journal and doing REI's like voiceovers for the commercials that were airing. Like it was just this. You were you were bizarre. grinding. Damn. I was, <laughs> yes, yeah. And meanwhile, I was like steaming clothes in the media studio. <laughs> Um, for like whatever shoot we were on. Uh, but yeah, so I was, I was working on these like expert advice videos, um, with this team. And, um, so like just before the pandemic, REI decided that they wanted to really make their YouTube channel more of, a um, like more entertaining and less like just informational. Yeah, um, that makes sense. <laughs> You know, yeah, less of the like, hi, I'm Bob with REI and like, this is how to put on a harness and more like, you know, actual YouTube content. Yeah, Um, which was a smart move on their part. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of surprised that more brands aren't doing this, not just outdoor brands, too. I mean, I know some do, but like, especially like outdoor brands, like, come on, like as soon as I sorry to cut you off here, but as soon as I like noticed your channel and like I said, I didn't watch a ton of videos, but like I got the gist of it. Um, I saw what REI was doing and I was like, that's smart. Like, that's smart. It's a great way to grow the business. It's, it's a great idea to put a personality kind of, um, behind the brand like that It is so smart. I'm I'm sorry. Anyways, continue. But I just, I appreciated that, that they did that. Honestly, I thought that was a good move. Oh yeah. Me, I mean, me too, completely. And, um, really it was Rainer, uh, who's still my creative director now, I guess my, my coworker. Um, REI brought Rainer in to work on their YouTube channel and Rainer comes from a background of BuzzFeed. So he actually worked in LA for years. He worked on a, a number of big like BuzzFeed channels. Um, 
and left LA, came back to Seattle for a little while, um, got a job at REI. It was kind of for him. He was like, oh, maybe I'll move to New York. Like, I'm just going to do this thing here because he's from Seattle. And um, REI hired Rainer. Rainer saw a couple of videos that I'd done, like uh, with the, the expert advice team. And moreover, saw some like cutting room floor footage of me just like being <laughs> myself. And he was the one who came to me and was like, hey, are you, do you have any like strong opinions? Like, do you want to talk more about your own personal experiences in the outdoors? Is there anything that you really like are passionate about talking about? Um, and like, I, I was like, I have so many opinions and so many thoughts about stuff and I would love to do that. And so he and I just like sat down and we brainstormed and we um, essentially pitched to REI starting a uh, YouTube series. Um, and it was one of those things that was like, yeah, you know, go for it like that. They were really cool about kind of piloting this concept. Mm -hmm. um, and then the we filmed some stuff, the pandemic hit, and it wound up being like sort of the only video series that REI had filmed that we had filmed with REI. Um, and that was really like the big start. It was like all of a sudden in the middle of the pandemic, we're like launching a new YouTube series and like talking about the outdoors when like most people are can't really like get out and do stuff so yeah that was that um but really it was rainer like ultimately it was like i was like i said i was like you know a production assistant i was printing out like headshots and invoices and rainer came over to my desk and was like do you want to make youtube videos and i was like <laughs> heck yeah yeah so. that sounds that sounds like a lot more fun i might be a little biased as someone who makes youtube videos but that's that's so yeah. awesome i think that's such a unique story and and like it's interesting like obviously i've talked to a lot of other you know youtubers and creators in this space and that's that's obviously such a unique story like coming up through rei pretty much and you obviously found a lot of success with it too um how long did it take before you and rei actually i'm kind of curious yeah. about that too how long did it take before you and REI like really realized that like this was a good idea. Like there's something, there's something special <laughs> to this. People are responding. Was it like a slow come up or did it happen like pretty fast? It actually happened pretty fast. That's kind of what it seemed like to me, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty quick. Um, we, I think posted the first video and like, not that it did amazingly well, not that we had something with like hundreds of thousands of views or anywhere close to that. But it just was really well received. And it was essentially just introducing the idea of the series. Um, and people were really excited. And a lot of people, like a big benefit of that was a lot of people recognized me from these videos that REI had done. And we had, because I'd been working with this other team on these much more like sort of corporate language videos, people had gotten used to seeing me. People were like asking my opinions about things. Mm -hmm. And so when we like branched off and made this series that was much more like my it was like my personality was kind of um, in some ways like guiding the tone of the series, I guess, which sounds really weird to say, but like, you know what I mean? No, no, um, I know exactly what you mean. I, I don't think that's yeah. a weird way to phrase it at all. I know what you mean. Okay, sweet. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> just sounds just sounds like, I don't know, sounds like a robot thing to be no, like, my personality no, no, no. guides this. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was like, you know, people were, were pretty used to um, seeing me. And so the response was really, really positive. And I think fairly quickly we all realized like oh shit like people people really want to see people are not we're not getting this as much you know like people want to see someone with this background with this experience somebody who's like admittedly not good at a lot of this stuff but like does it all the time talk about it in really like an open honest way for a brand you know mm -hmm. um so yeah i think that's it's, just what people want to see a lot of the time in content generally too and yeah. the fact that it was kind of for the lack of a better word, attached to REI's yes. brand, obviously must have been very good for them. I, I think it's I think it's such a cool story, and I know you're probably sick of telling it at this point, but I haven't heard it yet, and so I had to I had to ask Miranda. Totally. Um, and my next question, I'm sure it's also one that you've been asked before, but you kind of actually started to touch on it a little bit, and I want to go a little yeah. bit deeper. Why do you think that people were drawn? to your content i'm not talking about youtube behind the scenes analytical stuff either i mean <laughs> you know uh, you know what i mean i think 
Yeah. What it what was it about the Miranda in the Wild videos that you think people were so drawn to? Yeah. Um so I think I've like thought about this a lot. Um and I think that so my best guess, this is why people were really drawn to it, and I'm still so grateful for that, is that I kind of pres- like I kind of like represent that every person outside, like I'm not super good at this stuff. I just really enjoy it. I find it really fun. And I think in a place like backpacking and, and hiking where some people feel like it can be extremely elitist and not very welcoming and like scary in the sense of we are we we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to be good at something. I think to see somebody who is not is like openly not necessarily good at it, but doing it anyway, makes people feel uh, like a lot more comfortable, you know? Um, And I think in a lot of ways, like all I'm really doing with the channel and like with the series is essentially just being like a um, conveyor of information to people. Like all Mm -hmm. I'm necessarily doing is being like, Hey, this is what I learned. And like, I'm sharing that with you. Or like, this is what I experienced and I'm sharing that with you. And like, I'm not necessarily I haven't done anything super special. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't have any kind of like world records or like I've, I've never done a through hike. Like I'm one of the only outdoor YouTubers who's like never done a big hike, you know? Well, there's, 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 there's other ones for sure. I mean, there are, yeah, but there's not very many of us, you know, it's like, yeah, it is definitely like pretty split, but like the, the number of people who backpack generally is, and, and aren't through hikers is far larger than the number of people who are through hikers. But like the YouTube yes. hiking world is definitely like the through hikers are disproportionately um, represented. And that, I guess, is a good way to say it. So I, I do, totally. I do un- like understand what you're saying there. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think that's like the main reason that it resonated with people. Um, it's just that, that like, just kind of realizing that, like, I got a lot of people saying, like, yeah, you made me realize that, like, if you could do it, I could do it, you know? <laughs> and I think that that's, that's kind of the main reason. Um, I think also we, when I say we, I mean really like the editors, because, you know, I've, I've been working with the production team since I started, um, which is also really rare for YouTubers and really lucky for me. Um, but, like, we kind of managed to capture the, just, like, joy and enthusiasm yes you do so well and i was gonna bring this up if you didn't because i think that's another huge reason and coming from someone who you know it's it's different with my content obviously but i tried to do the same thing in a different way but i like i tried to be like funny and you know make it less serious i guess and i really think that you've done again in a different way Um, probably a much better way but you've (laughs) done a similar thing with your content and personally I think that's another huge reason why people were so drawn to your content yeah yeah I think I think so and I'm I'm really grateful for that um, because you know really when we go out and we film like we're just capturing whatever the actual experience is there you know and I think it's really cool to be able to capture something that for me feels very much exactly like a trip would have felt even without cameras rolling because I think people see something like that and they're like oh this is like this is backpacking like backpacking can be fun you know like it is an enjoyable activity um because I think for so many people who are are not into the activity like are not backpackers or hikers it is hard to separate the idea of like backpacking like when you have a weekend off with like the show alone or survivor. You know? I know so people, you're so right. Yeah. You're so yeah. right. Um, so I think just kind of showing like the joy and the fun of it, um, I think is really what resonated with people. I think, I think you're, I think you're spot on and I will push back. I don't think you've mentioned a few minutes ago that you're bad at backpacking. You're not bad at backpacking Miranda. Um, <laughs> right. <That's laughs> I understand like what you meant by it, but yeah. Just to be clear, Miranda is not bad at backpacking. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, I don't want to say I'm bad at it because that feels unfair. Um, I was super bad at it when I first started. Right. We, um, we all were. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think the reason I say that is a short story um, that I've also told a couple times. I'm sorry. To no, my that's mom, okay. <laughs> but uh, when, oh. we, when we first like decided to do Miranda in the Wild, I like called my mom up and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to like pilot a couple like videos for the YouTube channel 
on like a series that's like going to be about my like backpacking experience, you know? And she was like, wow, that's really great. But like, why you? She's like, you don't, you would have like done any, I know, I love my mom so much. She was like, you know, such a mom thing. She was like, what yeah. have you done? Like, what's, you know, she was like, you're not really, like, you don't have any um, world records. You're not like an expert at this. You don't have any like certifications. Like, you just started backpacking like less than 10 years ago. Like, why you? And I was like, well, mom, I think like that's exactly why, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you are just... the audience, essentially. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, yeah, which is really cool because, like, you know, with a lot of the channel, like, I get to learn things right alongside other people who are also learning. And, like, that's really cool for me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's kind of, it, for me, just on your last point there about learning things besides people um, that are watching, it's kind of been the same thing. Even no matter how many miles, hundreds, thousands of miles I've hiked, like, I still am always learning new things from the people yeah. in the comments, especially as it pertains to gear. Like sometimes I'll get asked about like people will just assume that like, and, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, throwing any shade to the people that do this. Like I totally understand it, but people will just assume like, Oh, you're this YouTuber about backpacking. You probably know a lot about every piece of gear. And they'll ask right. me like, Oh, like what are your opinions on this very specific model of this tent or rain jacket and i've never even like heard of it and i'm just yes. like i don't know <laughs> like <laughs> yes oh my gosh that is so oh, i'm sure dude. you get that too oh yeah i had like some kid one time ask like an actual ch child he's probably like nine years old and he was like asking me this was years ago he's asking me about um like cuban fiber uh, what and, like and, and i was like you mean like carbon fiber and he was like no and i like, and he was like okay um and like went home and like googled was like, what the heck is that kid's going about? places wow you know seriously yeah uh the look on his face was hilarious when i was like carbon fiber he was like you're dumb <laughs> like, it was so that's so funny <laughs> that kid if he hasn't said an fkt by now i I'm going to be shocked. T totally. Yeah. I'm definitely like expecting to read about him in like the next episode or next like a uh, outside issue. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so we've talked a lot about kind of how you got started with REI and all this stuff. Um, but we got a, we got a, a, a big piece of news here. It's not breaking at this point, but <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about, how you're moving on that that's the way i phrase yeah. it you know hopefully that's okay with you but moving on from rei i guess you could say um yeah. which is a big deal it's a big deal and i'm very excited for you by the way we could talk a little bit about that maybe after the recording um but sure. <laughs> but no i'm Thanks. i'm very excited i think it's probably a pretty good move again i don't really know much but before i dig myself into a hole here and sound <laughs> like too much of an idiot um what what led to that decision, I guess? And take that wherever yeah. you want. Obviously, you know, feel free to say as much or as little as you want about it. I don't think it's anything like super dramatic or anything, but I am curious, like, yeah. like what went into that decision? Um, how long, like, did it take you to kind of decide that? Was it like a yeah. long time coming or was it more recent? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm, sh I'm sure people want to know, Miranda, what's, what's the scoop? <laughs> Yeah, um, man, it was, it, it has been both a long time coming and also like a very sudden thing. Interesting. If that makes any sense. Um, it doesn't. Please elaborate. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> what if I just left at that? I'm like, no comment. <laughs> yep, that's, that's my answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, REI, like I said, like when, when we started Miranda in the Wild, REI was not... Um, set up to have like an in-house creator. And I think when we all realized that this was going to become more than just um, kind of like a something we ran for a couple months, you know, answered some backpacking questions, um, answered some like SEO, uh, like search engine optimization, customer questions, and then kind of moved on from. Mm -hmm. um, that was when REI really became like, okay, how do we like set up our you know, quote unquote infrastructure to like support an in-house creator, you know, cause I was already an REI employee when we started that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and as amazing as they were with all of that, it's like, it, you know, ultimately as, um, once I realized that I wanted to like be a content creator, like that was going to be my job. Like that was what really 
made me the happiest, you know, um, and what, like where I felt like I could sort of provide value to the world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as incredible as Ari, I was, I think we both kind of realized like, okay, to some extent the channel is going to outgrow what REI can like realistically support um in-house at least you know Uh um and I keep saying in-house like that sounds maybe kind of vague but you know what I'm saying it's like to to really support a content creator uh as a brand it's like at some point in time either the brand is gonna have to say okay we need to like we need to have other people also talking about our brand or talking about our company you know or the creator is gonna say like okay I need to branch out and like do other stuff you know yeah yeah um and it was a super mutual decision. Like when um, there were a lot of like questions that I'd been asking of REI and like talking to my managers about over the past, basically the year since we launched the channel, which were like coming up on a, a year and a couple months here since we launched the actual Miranda in the Wild. Now Miranda goes outside mm-hmm. channel. Um, and I had a bunch of questions about uh, like interacting with the audience and different things that people were asking for, like merch and, um, you know, meetups and events and all that. And like, that's just as incredible as REI was with supporting so much of that. Like, it's just harder to do that when you're having to go directly through the company itself, which like might seem weird, you know, that might seem like, oh, that would be easier but it's not. Um, and so we ultimately just realized that like the opportunities were going to be more for both me and for REI, um, if I went independent. So that's kind of like the somewhat vague, <laughs> like answer. I yeah, guess. no, um, I, I, I think that, I think you did a, a good job though. Um, <laughs> and I appreciate, yeah. I, I'm sure, you know, uh, you knew you were going to have to talk about it when it yeah. happens, but I'm sure it's still a little bit I don't know. You didn't sound uncomfortable at all, but I'm just thinking if it was me, it's almost like, yeah, no, I'm not going to, never mind. I'm not going to go there. Uh, I was going to make <laughs> well, a really bad those... comparison to a breakup, but it's oh, not I like mean, that yeah, at all. Like, it's like, you know, it's kind <laughs> it's... of a breakup to some extent. Like it's a little, it's like a very, very mutual breakup. But... A mutual breakup. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I've just had too many bad, not mutual and not good breakups <laughs> in my life. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so that's where my yeah. mind went, but I guess there yeah. are mutual breakups too. And and I guess this is one of them. It to- Totally. And, um, you know, it's like a funny thing to talk about because I think ultimately, like, I can't necessarily explain to anybody why it, like, it's hard to exactly put into words why it was time to leave REI, except to just say that, like, it was time. Like, it was, mm-hmm. you know, we, we just hit a point where, um, you know, I was just so excited to be able to, as much as I love REI and I love all of the stuff that I got to do there. And like, they really pre- like created this incredible jumping off point for the channel. Um, but like, there's a lot of other brands that I wanted to learn about and know about. There's a lot of other creators I wanted to talk to. There are other events I want to do. And those things are just a little bit harder to support um, when you're like employed by a company, you know, just for all sorts of reasons yeah i mean Um, i would imagine at the end of the day obviously aria is a great company but like they are a company and their their primary motivation is to make money and that's not necessarily a bad thing you know um they provide a lot of great value for people um but i can just i'm speculating here but i could just imagine that like you're talking about wanting to branch out a little bit and try different things whether it be gear or different events and all this stuff, I can just see how, and I'm sure a lot of people listening can too, understand how that might not go down well for the lack of a better term yeah. um, when REI is, you know, more focused on, and understandably so, REI. Yeah, that's well, yeah, a terrible way to put like, it. But <laughs> No, no, you're right. And they're also like, like paying the bill. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, I don't know if that, I, I, I want to make sure that that sounds... Like that is a very, it was an, like I said, an incredible thing. Working for REI was awesome. Um, but yeah, it's like, I can't necessarily be like, Hey, REI, I want to like go do this trip to the Grand Canyon and I don't have a permit and I'm going to try and like sleep there and get a permit and do it just cause I want to and have them be like, okay, sure. We'll like pay for that. Like there's no, like, what am I actually, you know, providing necessarily, I guess, value wise. Um, so like where I can see something being provided for my, for like YouTube, um, REI was really great about like trusting that there was value there for them as well. But like, sometimes it's hard to, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not always easy to 
hoop, gosh, maybe you should just not say that part. <laughs> but like, yeah, I guess there's just, there were some challenges, I think. And, and even with an awesome company like REI, like there's still corporate red tape that we all had to work with. And I think when I say we all, I mean like me, my team, and also my managers and everybody who ever like touched the series. Mm-hmm. I think we all just realized like, okay, this is going to be a better partnership for everyone involved. Um, and it was honestly like the easiest and best and most positive experience leaving. So yeah, <laughs> it was well, really good. <laughs> well, well, hats off to REI for making it be that way. And, and hats off to you for, for making that decision, which I'm sure was not easy. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure that was kind of nerve wracking, but like I said earlier, I think you made a good decision, Miranda. Thanks. Um, one thing we've touched on a little bit, I feel like I've said this before every single question, but I especially mean it before I ask this next question because <laughs> I saw people in your live stream today doing this. Um, I was going to say, I'm sure you've gotten this question a lot, but this one's definitely a more recent question because it kind of has to do with you moving on from REI. Yeah. Um, so now that you're... Again, I don't know all the details of like if they were telling you to use certain gear or not. I'm not, I'm not trying to go into that, but... Now that you're not, you know, uh, working for them, we'll say, are there any like different brands of gear or types of gear, maybe like some more like cottage kind of stuff um, that you're curious, you know, in trying that maybe you didn't have a chance to before when you were assuming, I'm assuming here when you were more confined to (laughs) REI selection. Is that fair? I I really trying to be fair here with this. No, that's totally fair. Yeah. You know, it's funny. REI never asked me, like all the videos that we made for REI were things that I wanted to make that like, they were just kind of like, go for it, do it, you know, make whatever you want. I never had to use gear that REI told me to use. Like I could use whatever I wanted, but the reality is like, I worked for REI for over a decade. So like the only stuff that I knew about was stuff sold at REI, Mm -hmm. you know, that was it. And so like when that was my job, that was the only gear that I was using. So yeah, now that we are independent, I am super excited to get to use more, uh, like mostly, I mean, you said this, but mostly more cottage brand stuff. Yeah. Um, I am like, I didn't even know about cottage brands until a couple of years ago. I didn't even know about this concept of like small brands making really niche type of gear that just like didn't, that was just not within my, my understanding at all with backpacking. Um, and as the years have gone on, it's something where I have like, especially with ultralight, when people started talking about ultralight backpacking and I would be like, what the heck is <laughs> this like ultralight bidet that you like screw onto a smart water bottle? Like, what is this <laughs> thing? You know, um, but, like all of this, this gear that just is super fascinating to me. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to being exposed to like a lot more of that stuff now. Um, and for me, it's a lot about just like now that I am not just only shopping at REI again, not because I had to, but because I fucking worked there, you know, like that was for such a long time. Yeah. It makes sense. Where I shopped, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm super jazzed to get to use, uh, some more brands. Um, there are a couple brands that I've been using for a couple of years now that I just like, am absolutely in love with. And, uh, I'm really excited to like get more from them and learn more from them. But I'm also really excited because one of my very first sponsors on the channel is actually Garage Grown Gear. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, I'm really excited because, uh, like, you know, they sell all cottage gear, like only cottage gear. Yeah. And uh, when they reached out about doing a partnership, I was like, yeah, dude, but like, I don't know anything about cottage gear. So like, what if the videos are just about me not knowing anything about it? And you just like send me a mystery box of stuff. And, uh, the Lloyd, the owner was like, yeah, sure. Like that sounds good. So that's so really... perfect. That's so yeah. perfect. And like, I imagine that I'm sure a lot of your audience is familiar with some of these brands, but there's probably a lot of people who aren't too. And oh, so yeah. not only are you going to get to kind of take this journey and, and dip your toes into the, the cottage gear world, so to speak, but I'm sure a lot of people that watch your channel are going to learn about so much new gear as well. It's good yeah. for you. It's good for them. It's good for the brands too. I, I think it's, totally. I think it's awesome, Miranda. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I'm really excited about it. I think it'll be super fun. So I actually have a box sitting next to me right now 
um, that has been just sitting there because I can't open it until we film. And I'm like really, really excited about it. <laughs> you haven't peeked? You haven't just like maybe just opened like one of the flaps on the no, box? No, I haven't. I good am for not you. a peeker. I do not do that. But you have I did good see... discipline. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. I did see that there's something blue in there. I could like kind of see through the tape. You know what I mean? Like just looking down at it. So um, that's all. That's all I got. There's something something blue. blue from yeah, garage right. grown gear. What could it be? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Gosh, there's only so many options. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm not, I don't know everything they sell, obviously, but I'm not even going to try to guess. I'm going to, I'm going to mess it up. <laughs> you're just, you're just going to have to be surprised like me. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I'll definitely have to, uh, I'll definitely have to watch that one. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for, for kind of laying all that out there. Um, yeah. I think you did a great job and there will come a time very shortly, Miranda, where nobody will ask you that question anymore <laughs> and <laughs> unfortunately this is not that time because this is all still relatively recent but oh, yeah that time will come very very quickly yeah. um <laughs> so let's see here this is a question that i like to ask people not even so much on the podcast usually honestly but um i'm sure i have asked other youtubers this before but i, I like to chat with people about this other youtubers about this like more just you know, off record. Yeah. But it is kind of an interesting question. And, and I've been asked this too, when I've been on various podcasts as well. So mm. since you started making content about backpacking, do you ever go hiking or backpacking without bringing the camera, without posting on Instagram, without, without making content essentially? Um, yeah. Or do you pretty much do it every single time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well wow, that's such a great question um i well wait hold on first of all i want to know your answer what, what's your answer to that question sure um i do i go like day hiking and trail running a lot without filming it um a couple yeah. times a week usually um backpacking not so much i usually film most of my back there's a couple times i did I did an entire freaking almost through hike last short through hike 160 miles last summer that I didn't film. And then there was like a shorter trip the summer before. So most of my backpacking I film, but every now and then I won't, but day hikes and like trail running and stuff. I hardly film any of that. So I still get out quite a bit without filming, but I also know, um, I don't think he'll mind if I say this, uh, syntax 77. Are you familiar with his channel? I am, yeah. So I asked him this this question one time when we were hiking together, actually. And he told me that he, at the time, I think it's changed a little bit since then, but at the time, he told me that he had, I'm pretty sure, never hiked and not filmed it. So it really wow. does kind of vary. But anyways, um, that's that's my answer. So yeah. uh, how, does it, how does it look for you? Yeah, so I do definitely like go hiking and not film. Um, Partly that's because I, you know, like I said earlier, like I have a crew, like I work with a videographer and a producer. And so like, if I'm just doing something alone, chances are good. I'm not filming it. You know? <laughs> um, or if I am, it's like on my cell phone and it's just, you know, just pure garbage. And it's just like for me to look back at, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I definitely do a lot of like hiking where I'm not filming, um, the strange thing for me, though, has been that I find now that I love filming so much that, like, I actually feel kind of a sense of loss when I don't get to film something and don't get to, like, be out kind of making content, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Doesn't for it, sure. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, I think that that's because I just, you know, I've always felt... I think once I, I started hiking so much and I was going to these places, especially when I was doing it alone... Um, and I was getting to see these places that were just so incredible and, and like so beautiful. And I really wanted to share them with all my friends and my family. And I would like film stuff on my phone or, you know, take pictures or like send a voice recording, just like really desperately wanting to kind of share this experience. And I think that having the channel now, it's like, I get to do that on such a big level, um, like such a big way. Um, and so if I'm not out, if I'm like out backpacking and I'm not filming, it, it is in some ways less enjoyable for me because I find myself being like, oh man, I really would love somebody <laughs> else to get to see this, you know? Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, in, in a weird way, it's like filming content actually makes me feel more in the moment, um, than not now. Uh, and I'm sure that that will change. There are plenty of times where I like really don't want to film something, you know? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, for the most part, I think, um, yeah, more and more I end up filming every single time I'm out, not necessarily because it's going to be in a video or not necessarily because it's ever going to see the light of day, but just like because it makes me enjoy the experience more. That's so awesome. I I, I get asked, especially a lot after the PCT this year or oh, last yeah. year, shit, January 22nd right now, I'm still calling, <laughs> I'm still oh messing God. up the year. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, since the PCT, I've been asked this quite a bit from people. They're like, oh, like, did the filming ever intrude on the hike? Was it ever, like, a burden? Did you ever not want to do it and feel obligated to do it and all this stuff? And my honest answer was no. And yeah. it kind of – I'm sure you've been asked that before, too. And, like, genuinely, like, no. Like, it really doesn't get in the way. And, and like like you just said, there, there definitely were a lot of times on the PCT where I did not want to film. And I – just didn't film and it was right. fine and so there's ways to do it without causing it to become a burden and another thing too is like it's just fun like it's yeah. just fun <laughs> and your audience knows it because yeah. it comes across so well on camera like you can't fake that you know you really totally. can't fake that <laughs> and so it, it is fun <laughs> like it's so much fun and so like of course yeah. like we're gonna want to film most of what we do you know Oh my gosh, completely. I think that that's, I think you're exactly right. Like it's fun and it's, uh, you know, it's like, I, I'm not a good actor. Like I can't like pretend to <laughs> like, be having a good time, especially when, like I said, like backpacking sometimes really sucks. You know? Yeah. Um, like I'm convinced that the first mile of every single backpacking trip is never fun. Like I've never been on a backpacking trip where the first mile has been like, oh, this is fun. Cause even if it's flat, you're like, wow, this is boring, you know? Or even if it's like, really beautiful you're like oh well i hope that the rest of the trail is like this or you're tired or you're like pack hurts or like you know whatever it's like i have never had fun the first mile of backpacking and yet like the whole experience is often really great yeah um, so yeah it's like i i love uh yeah i love filming and i love getting to like share that with people and i feel really privileged in a lot of ways that like all of that is recorded for my sake you know so I'm, oh like, yeah so you can yeah. look back on it Oh my gosh, when I'm like 97 and I'm like in bed or something um, and I just like watch YouTube videos of myself, you know, probably like implanted directly in my brain or something by uh -huh. that point. But, you know, yeah, be cool. I love that aspect of filming my hikes too. I love being able to look back on it. I've made so many videos at this point. I hardly ever watch any of them except for the ones where I'm actually on trail and I'm yeah. doing something cool. Like I look back on those almost too much, to be honest with you, because... Yeah. <laughs> It's gotten to the point where I've rewatched some of these videos so so much that I feel like it's starting to warp the actual experience like oh, uh, uh, in my memory like all totally. I'm starting to like only remember the things that were on video or like remember Oh my god totally It's yes. it's it's kind of weird honestly like I'm looking back on maybe not with the PCT stuff yet cuz that was still relatively yeah. recently but with um some of the older videos I've done where I'm actually on trail and stuff I'm just like I feel like my memory is slowly just becoming the video instead of, <laughs> but, oh but I mean, gosh, it's, yes. it's, it's still, I, I feel like there's not that many people out there that can relate to this. So it's funny, yes, yeah. um, <laughs> but it's still so worth it to have that stuff to look back on. I love that. That is one of my favorite things about making content for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And, and, you know, I live like across the country from my family. So I also really like from my, my mom and my dad, yeah. sister, um, my dad's wife and like, I just live so far away from these people and I love that I can really get to share these experiences with them in some way, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and like, I just, yeah, I think that's really cool. So yeah. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. I've, I definitely feel like the more I've started to post content, even before YouTube, even when I was just posting more on Instagram about it and doing the podcast and stuff, like my parents definitely not that they ever were disinterested, obviously they're very supportive and, you yeah. know, thought it was awesome that I was doing this stuff, but the more I was able to show them, it makes perfect sense. Um, the more they were able to kind of take an interest in it and yeah. appreciate it. And now it's to the point where my mom knows all the terminology. She's never set foot on the Appalachian trail in her entire life, but she knows what a yellow blazer is and she knows That's what so cool. Nobo means and all these like slang, you know, hiking terms and stuff. I so love that. <laughs> it's wait, hang on. 
Hold on. One second. What's up? What did you call it? S- slang? No. The trail? The AT? The AT? What did you call it? What did I call it? What did you say? I thought I said AT. No, you said, say the full name of it. Appalachian Trail? Appalachian Trail. Oh, okay. How now, dare now, you? Now How you're dare just. You? <laughs> this is actually a perfect transition <laughs> because I get that comment so much from people. Yeah. They're like, Appalachian Trail. Like, you're saying it wrong. You're saying it wrong. Like, down here, we actually live in the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> and, like, this is how we say it. And I'm like, bro, I, I, I'm from Vermont. I don't know if you're aware of this, Mr. from West Virginia or whatever, yeah. but. But friggin' the Appalachian Mountains aren't just in the south, okay? Imagine. And they go through the northeast. Mountains. <laughs> Appalachia. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda, I think you have no I idea how how often I get that comment. <laughs> it's... Are you well count me count me as one more? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's oh, so no. funny because like I think the only reason I feel that way about it is because when I moved out to uh the west coast was the only time i like when that was the only time i started to hear appalachian <laughs> and it was i was like what are you saying like what is that word like i'm from virginia you know and uh that was like the first time people be like oh yeah the appalachian mountains and i was like that's not a place like i don't know what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> it's the yeah. most divisive issue among oh east coast hikers for I, sure <laughs> it totally is. And like, it wouldn't have bothered me if people hadn't tried to correct me, you know, like my crew. Who's oh, from the so West you get Coast. it the other way around. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're like Appalachian. <laughs> like, you're getting it. Yes. You're making me a little bit more sympathetic to the people Good. that give me shit for it then, because I never really thought about this too. I only ever thought about it in terms of people telling me I was pronouncing it wrong, but <laughs> we got to be fair here. I guess it would be equally as annoying and obnoxious if. Right. People from the north were saying that people from the south were pronouncing it wrong. So that's right. Thank you. Very, very fair of you. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up. And the reason the reason this is a good transition is because um, I guess this will probably be the last question I ask before we get into the story at the end. Okay. Um, I gotta ask. Is again, this is another YouTuber question. Um, now your content is so positive and so wholesome. So I'm sure you don't get that many comments, but I also know, or uh, that many bad comments, uh, yeah. you know, negative comments. Um, but I also know with the amount of views you're getting, it doesn't matter what you're posting, whether it's the most positive stuff in the world, you're going to have some bad comments. And so I got asked about this recently on another podcast I was a guest on. And I feel like I, and the question was, how do you deal with the negative comments essentially? And I feel like I didn't really have a good answer. And yeah. so it's kind of got me thinking, since I have another YouTuber, you know, on the podcast right now, is that something you've thought about much? Like, how do you, do they affect you? Like, how do you handle them? How do you deal with them? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, I, so I do get like quite a lot of mean comments, um, mostly just critical of me specifically, like not necessarily critical of our content or critical of my attitude. A lot of stuff like you're annoying or you're ugly or stuff like that, you know, Mm -hmm. um, or just saying like you suck, you know, things like, but like, yeah, I definitely, I definitely get a lot of mean comments. I actually used to do on Instagram, a mean comment Monday series where i would like read mean comments i, would, like, <laughs> I think i remember these... this people love oh. that stuff uh, the oh only gosh. time i ever get like flooded in my dms is when i post yeah. mean comments people oh, love so that stuff good some of my i man there are some that are so funny i actually have one of them in my bio somebody wrote that i was obnoxiously self-confident and i was like that is the perfect descriptor like, that, that is, is amazing yeah like, that's exactly that's, correct like that's your that's totally an right. insult this yeah, isn't even... they were like, oh, she looks so, yeah. Um, I know, I loved it. I was like, I'm not just saying self-confident is perfect. Um, I think that with mean comments, I, so my friend Pam once said to me that I was not born with the um, gene that like makes you like give a fuck about what people say about you, you know? Okay, um, yeah. It's like the, it's kind of like the like, you know, people are like, oh, like uh, I D G A F. Is that correct you know whatever i think so um, <laughs> it's like that's i kind of just for whatever reason i've never been particularly good about like caring about what other people think about me because like i just i i recognize the fact that like i am the only person i can be as myself you know for better or for worse um <laughs> and so in a weird way i think the mean comments for me are something i really appreciate 
because it reminds me that there are always people out there that are not going to like me. And that makes me feel a little bit more like comfortable and confident with just being myself, you know? It's inevitable. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think especially because we just got so incredibly lucky with our, our audience um, being, I mean, like you said, like everyone on our, our content is just so positive and warm and kind. And like, we just have some of the most amazing people following the channel. And I am like, it truly is just like the best corner of the internet. Obviously I'm biased. Mm -hmm. um, but I think to some extent, sometimes I'll be reading these comments and when people are so kind, it can start to feel like, like it starts to feel a little bit surreal. I think it um, does. I've, I've yeah. experienced this as well. Like you, I don't know about you, but sometimes if I get like a really good response to a video and yeah. people are just like writing all these, not just about the video, but about like me, like, Oh, like yeah. you're my favorite YouTuber, like all this stuff, like, not that it happens. Okay. I'm talking myself up here. Not that it, <laughs> not that it happens like a ton, but like it does happen sometimes. And yeah. it is like kind of surreal. I, I feel like sometimes I almost like, I hate to say it, but I almost like go numb to it a little bit almost. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think for me, I start to feel like, oh gosh, I hope that people don't feel like they're obligated to say this stuff, you know? Interesting. Okay. And yeah. And I start to feel like, I don't know, to, to some extent it almost like can make me a little anxious in some ways and so like recently we posted a video announcing me leaving rei and the response was just like overwhelmingly positive um and it was so amazing to just see all these like positive comments coming in and then we got like a like one or two not very many mean comments but just like a couple and i felt this weird like spike of adrenaline where i was like oh my gosh that's right like this is the internet people can say whatever they want to say like people can write whatever yep. they want to write and like these people are choosing to be so kind. And I think that is like what I really love about mean comments is that it reminds me that as many people as there are out there that could have said something cruel, like so many people chose to be nice, you know, um, that, so yeah. that is the best answer. I'm not just trying to flatter you here. That is the <laughs> best answer to that question I've ever heard. Cause like I said, oh, when shit, I, when I got asked this, I was kind of just like, I don't know. They just don't bother me and like that's such yeah. a late what you just said there that that is awesome Miranda like seriously nice. um don't you again it's true though like don't you think it that is that... so true and honestly yeah. I never really thought about it that way like seriously I I, I and again like I I'm not just trying to flatter you like obviously like I am a YouTuber as well and so like I really feel this <laughs> on a personal right. level um that is so true I'm gonna really again and, and then, honestly the negative comments don't really bother me very much either but like yeah that is that is just such a good perspective. I think that's something I'm going to keep in mind um going yeah. forward when I'm oh, when I'm reading my comments. Um you're a you're a professional, Miranda. You <laughs> That I think I actually doesn't give you credit because that was such a a personal answer. So Thank you. Th that's that that's just awesome. Thanks. I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> oh man, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm glad it made sense to you. I'm glad you weren't like don't get it. <laughs> no, that made total sense. And and I think yeah. it it made sense to everybody listening to. Um, wow. So we're getting towards the end of the episode here. Um, I imagine I'm probably going to have some new listeners for this episode. And so if you're new, the way we always start to close these episodes is I have my guest share a story could be any story from their experiences on the trail. And when I have other creators on, I like to challenge them to go a little bit further so obviously we spent a lot of time talking to the camera, sharing our experiences and stuff. So I like to challenge people that that make content and do this a lot to see if they can think of a story that they've never talked about or maybe one that they haven't talked about that much in their content. And it's not always possible, to be fair. I don't know what Miranda's about to say here. So if it's if it's not possible, honestly, I understand that because I it honestly isn't really possible for me anymore, <laughs> if I'm going to be totally honest. <laughs> I've told pretty much everything I have to or every story I have in some form, but, um, I do like to try to challenge people to do that, that make content. So without further yeah. ado, Miranda goes outside. And also it's a miracle. I haven't accidentally referred to you as Miranda in the wild this entire episode. I did, I did refer to it a few times yeah. uh, earlier, but that was when we were talking about like the, you know, back when it was Miranda in the wild. So that was actually intentional, but yeah. I don't think I've accidentally referred to you as Miranda in the wild 
I don't think you have. I'm impressed. I'm I'm, very... I'm impressed. And honestly, yeah. I was kind of nervous about that um, oh. leading up to the episode. But then I was watching your live stream today and I saw that you accidentally called it Miranda oh in the Wild. All the that, time. <laughs> that made me feel a lot better. <laughs> I like, don't even know who I am anymore. I'm like, which Miranda is it? <laughs> Talk about an identity crisis. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, okay. Anyways, without further ado, Miranda, what you got for us? Okay, so the story that I want to tell, I actually don't think I've told this before. Yes, um, we got it. (laughs) It's a short story, but I think it kind of perfectly captures um, just like me as a person and also what has like led me here. It's like making YouTube content. Um, So back when I had been working REI for I think like less than a year, um, I was living in Richmond, Virginia, uh, going to college, and I had a date with one of my coworkers, um and he Don't was like oh. fuck your co-worker sorry sorry <laughs> i had to say it. i had to say it <laughs> oh my god yeah i like said that song to everyone well two of our co-workers are uh dating and living together so oh no always, oh my gosh we're always making fun of them for that um but uh but yeah so i was like sorry um so i was on a i got asked out by this guy that i worked with and um he was like we should go hiking and i was like yeah that sounds awesome and like keep in mind i was not really into backpacking or hiking that much like i had okay. started to do it but i was like still not very experienced at all I actually might have not even been on my trip yet at that point now that okay. I think about it um so i didn't know the concept of like leave no trace completely foreign to me like no idea um i probably had like chucked apple cores into the woods tons of times um before that and he and i are on this hike and i like pull out a banana and i'm eating a banana and this is our first date ever um and i'm eating this banana and you know like we're just having whatever conversation while we're hiking uh and i just like finish the banana and just chuck the banana peel into the woods and he stops like dead in his tracks <laughs> and like turns around because like I'm hiking behind him, you know, and I like just chuck it. He like stops dead in his tracks and turns around and he's like, what, what, did, what, what did you just do? And I was like, I just finished my banana. So I threw the banana peel into the woods and I'm kind of like, not real. I'm like, what's the problem? You know? And he was like, you can't do that. And I was like, nah, it's fine. Oof. It's going to decompose. Like, it's no big deal. And you can see him, like, get, he's, like, panicking a little bit, you know? It's, like, absolutely, like, panicking in, like, I'm on a date with this girl, but also, like, she's just done something bad. Like, what do I do? Do you know what I mean? I know. That is a tricky spot to be in. <laughs> oh, my God. And he was like, you have to go get the banana peel. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. And he was like, no, you have to. <laughs> he's like, you have to do it. And so I was like, I don't understand why so as i'm like walking off the trail like looking for the banana peel in like the woods in virginia and it was fall so like everything's covered in leaves and he's like shouting to me from the trail he's like banana peels take like six months to decompose (laughs) like they're not organic to this area like it's not a native like native uh food as i'm like hunting through the like leaves looking for this banana peel being like this is absolute insanity and uh, I, like, found it. I put it in my backpack, and I was like, okay, like, my bad. We, like, finished the hike. We, like, came back, and I, like, went home and looked it up and was like, oh, damn, like, he was totally right. Like, you're not supposed to do that. And it was, like, my first time learning about Leave No Trace was, like, on a date with this dude who, like, insisted I go pick up a <laughs> banana peel that I chucked into the woods. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my story. That is so funny. I don't think we've ever had a first date story on the show before. Oh, really? Oh. That is that is so awesome, Miranda. And good for him for sticking to his guns because I could totally see like in that circumstance someone just, you know, putting their head down and Oh yeah. But he didn't. So 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 good for him and good for you for going and taking the time to and admitting that 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 um he was right. Yeah. And I also think it's nice that you're sharing this story, honestly, because I totally understand when people that don't know about this yeah. this stuff like would think that it's okay to to you know, put like fruit or something, you know, quote totally. natural just to just to just do that. Like so yeah. uh so thank you for sharing that. Real oh, quick, yeah. I have a so, somewhat similar story except i was way more of a douchebag in the story than you were um so i was i think i was 15 years old at the time that's very important so don't hate me everybody it was also my second hike 
ever. I've told this story on the podcast before, but it's been a long time. I was I was day hiking with some of my friends, just goofy high school kids. I was just being I was just being a douchey, yeah, high school kid. And we're hiking and oh god, this pains me to say. <laughs> I I finished a Gatorade and I chucked that shit on the side of the trail. And you she know what? Did not. I did. And I again I didn't know about leaving the trace, but obviously I should have known better. Like that I think that's a lot different than like a banana peel or something. But my friends who were all also just as goofy as me they had the they had the brains to at least know that that was not cool yeah. and so they told me they were like yo what like what are you doing like like go go pick that shit up and i immediately realized how stupid that was and i did pick it up and nice. i've yeah i i feel quite guilty about that still um <laughs> Well, it's so funny because I love that story, um, but it's so funny because I think that there's such like a way for us to all learn about Leave No Trace, and it can either be like a really negative experience for people. Like I have definitely seen people like yell at someone they don't. Oh know, yeah, oh yeah, or people like, shaming on social oh media God. and stuff. Like, yeah, that I don't like not that. The way to like educate people whatsoever, but like you and I are both lucky. I learned from like some sort of like timid dude who was like hey you can't do that <laughs> and like you learn from your friends being like hey bad idea you know real bad like, idea yeah yeah um once when i was sorry i know i we probably no you're good now, you're good you're... this is my my gatorade story because it reminded me of this but uh once when i was in new york and i was going through my um like i know better than everybody else about the planet and leave no trace phase um which was definitely a phase i went through but I was like walking, right. <laughs> I was like, you know, I wasn't 15 though. I was probably like 22. So really no excuse. Um, but I was like walking through Central Park, I think. And these um, kids who were where they were all like wearing the same, like, I don't know, model UN shirt or something. Um, they were like there for on a field trip. They were walking ahead of me and one of them like finished a Gatorade, dropped the bottle on the ground. Um, and like, if you've ever been to Central Park, there are trash cans and recycling bins everywhere. Like there's no reason to not throw something away. Mm -hmm. And so I like called out to the kid. I was like, hey, you dropped your, uh, your Gatorade. And like, they didn't turn around. So I like went and ran and picked it up and like ran up to this like teenager <laughs> and like tapped him on the shoulder. And I was like, hey, you dropped this. And he was like, oh, I don't want it. And I just like stood there holding the Gatorade bottle, just like a like, group of kids staring at me and then just was like, okay, and like threw it away. Oh, man. <laughs> just like thinking in my mind that it would be this like very easy moment of this person being like, oh, thanks. Oops. And instead realizing like, oh, no, you like. You like intended to drop this on yeah, the Yeah, they didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give a shit. It was very embarrassing for me. <laughs> well, you were trying to do the right thing at least. Right. <laughs> I mean, teenagers, they do some some dumb stuff. Um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Miranda, this was so fun. Like, thank you so much for coming on. I'd love to have Heck you yeah. back on um sometime soon. And yeah. And just, I'm so excited. Like I've said this a bunch, but I'm so excited for where your channel is going to go. I think you made a great decision and you. I know your audience is excited as well based on the response you got from that, uh, that video. So, so Miranda, um, where can people go? I'm sure a lot of people listening already know where to find you, but for those that don't, what's your YouTube, what's your Instagram, where can people find you on the, uh, on the internet? You can find me at Miranda Goes Outside on both YouTube and Instagram. So my channel is Miranda Goes Outside, previously Miranda in the Wild. And then my Instagram handle is also Miranda Goes Outside. Um, you can also find me on Patreon. Uh, and my website is MirandaGoesOutside.com. So all, all one now. <laughs> so thank you, Miranda. And thank you, everybody, for listening, too. If you're new, you can find the show on any podcast app. Um, which I probably shouldn't say that because they could, they're already listening to it on a puck. Okay. Anyways. Um, and my YouTube channel is Kyle hates hiking. It's not as good as Miranda's, but I would still be just so, so thankful if you went and checked it out anyways. And that's going to do it. Thanks for listening, everybody. Sweet. And it is good. You should go check it out. <laughs> Thank you, Miranda. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle.